the lights. There's this woman waiting in the shadows. I see her too. Hey, what's going on, movie lovers all over the world? Y'all already know this your boy Testified to the Music, a.k.a. Mikey Savage 21, bringing you another movie review. And today, I am so excited to be bringing you my non-spoilers review for the new film, Lights Out. Now, if you guys don't know, this is directed by David F. Sandberg, and it's his directorial debut. Um, he also did a short called Lights Out, just google it um just type in lights out short film and essentially what happened is he was approached by james wan and james wan's like hey i see a lot of great talent in you let me produce this through my company atomic monster now getting into the premise of the film it's pretty much about a young woman uh struggling to protect her brother um from this spirit which is connected to their mother and here casting wise you have uh, Teresa Palmer playing Rebecca. You have uh, Gabriel Bateman, who's playing the little brother, Martin. Then you have her boyfriend. Uh, and then you have Maria Bella. She's playing Sophie. She's the mother to Rebecca and Martin. And then you have this malevolent spirit played by Alicia Vell Bailey. And pretty much what I like about this film, and again, I am so, so excited to be reviewing this film and I was so excited to do this film you can ask my friend like on the way there I was just freaking out and geeking out about how much I really want to see this film and I gotta say it it lived up to my expectations um I know going into this when it comes to horror films a lot of times I'll get myself hyped up a lot especially when it's coming from these unknown directors that have these like directorial debuts I always get myself real fired up because the trailer looks awesome the TV spots look awesome the cast looks amazing and then I go into these films and then I'm sorely disappointed well this time I can honestly say I was not disappointed I 100% enjoyed everything that go went on in this film and getting into some of the aspects of the film what I liked about this film and I didn't notice it until the end. You know, we, we, we talk about James Wan and his directorial style and how he doesn't like to use a lot of noise. How he likes to use dark shadows and corners to uh, let you play on what you think is in the corner and what the creature looks like. And so that's exactly what's done here. You can tell that James Wan's style carried over here. And again, Sandberg did a great job of directing this and directing the short as well. Because a lot of times when you try to turn these shorts into full length films, it doesn't work. This film is roughly about, I want to say about a, about 81 minutes, about an hour or so. And you could tell that it was kind of short, which again, I don't mind it being kind of short. I'd rather have a short and straight to the point film than have one of these long drawn out films where it's like, oh my gosh, hurry up and get to what's going to happen. And so here... Also, what I like is when we got to the ending credits, there was only credited for one piece of music. So there was only one form of music that was going on throughout the entire film. Because, again, throughout the entire film, it doesn't focus in on necessarily background noise. It focuses more on the characters. We get more backstory with each of these characters. We actually start to care about these characters. And that's what horror films always seem to lack thereof they always seem to focus on the blood the gore and the monster and everything and what it looks like but they never really focus in on the characters and so here it was different Samberg clearly clearly focused in on his characters here again I cared about Teresa Palmer's character as well as Bateman's character and we really got to get a sense for here and then another thing I like is the boyfriend the guy who's playing the boyfriend uh alexander um i think it's deep D, D persia what i really like here is he wasn't that stereotypical boyfriend where he's like the bad boy or whatever and he ends up being a one and done character where we don't get any character development from him we don't get any growth and then he just eventually ends up dying 
Here they do the opposite. We get to really see his character and we get to really see what's going on with him and why he cares about Teresa Palmer's character. So I really like that. And I also like here the interaction with the mom and her children. You can tell she's a mom and she's struggling. She's had a hard time and a hard life. She's facing all of these things. And she's just sitting here trying to figure all of this out and what's going on. And then at the same time, you have this malevolent presence named Diana who's latched herself onto the mother. And it's just drawing from her weakness. And she just keeps drawing and drawing on her as she keeps getting more and more depressed and everything. And so eventually when you get to the climax of the film, you have a complete 180 from the mother. And she just finds this newfound strength, which I like. Now again, I won't get into specifics because again, this is a non-spoilers review. If you guys want me to do a spoilers review, I definitely will. I would love to just sit here and just talk about this film for hours on end. Again, jumping into some of the other aspects, I had mentioned that there was only one piece of music in here. I like that. I like how, again, we had one piece of music because this was a very quiet, slow burn film. Here, it was so quiet to where you had so much going on within the next scene that it needed to be quiet. That if you would have had music, it kind of would have taken you out of the film. So here, not only are we left in the dark, and our imagination can run wild about what Diana looks like and, and what she wants in this creature and how we get it gets plays with our sense of fear and whatnot. And I again talked about this on my Facebook. And I like how again it's quiet, it's a bit of a slow burn. So you have that going on pretty much and again there's no music, just that one piece of music. And if anything, I think the music was only used maybe about once. And I know for a fact that it was used, of course, in the ending credits, but I think throughout the film it was pretty much quiet. All you heard was just the character's dialogue. So, of course, with every film, there's going to have to be some negatives. For me, the only negatives I really had here were the fact that eventually we got to see what Diana looked like. Now, I don't mind seeing an arm or a leg or something here every once in a while, but I didn't really want to see Diana's face because I wanted to leave it up to the imagination of the watcher i know for me i wanted to imagine okay what would her face look like but here in this film they show us clearly what her face looks like so i was a little bummed out about that uh the only other really negative i could really think about this film is again it did feel a little bit short but again i'd rather have a short film that gets straight to the point another thing here that i didn't like was the solution that they found at the end to me, again, you know, using rational thinking and whatnot. And again, here, these characters, they are not stupid characters. They're not stereotypical characters where they think and act just like stereotypical characters within a horror film or a slasher film. These characters actually have a purpose and they're smart and they know what they're doing and they're calculating. But they still fall for some of the same tropes. But I feel like the resolution at the end of the film could have been handled in a different way. But I do like the way that it ended off because you don't know what the ending is like. You could take it a multitude of ways. Bringing up one more positive thing before I get into my score. One of the other things I like is how you could take the presence of Diana kind of somewhat like you did in the film The Babadook. How where, yes, you have this malevolent creature, this malevolent being that's evil and is trying to essentially kill and take your family away from you. But it also is playing on the mother as well to where internally she's suffering and struggling and having these things. So you could say that all the anger and all the pain and depression she has has physically manifested itself into something evil that wants to essentially keep it all to herself. Kind of similar with the Babadook and how... It could have been a representation of what she was going through in that film. You know, how that is all built up and physically manifested itself into something like the Babadook. And the same thing could be said here because, again, she is a single mother trying to raise this son all on her own. And then she feels abandoned and everything. And it's the same thing with Diana. She plays on that feeling, saying that I also feel abandoned, that you abandoned me. And so, again, she tries to do certain things to the character of Sophie and tries to keep her essentially in that depressed state. Now getting to my score, I'm gonna have to give this a four and a half out of five. It's a great film, I highly, highly recommend this. I know I say that a lot, and I know I give you guys a lot of recommendations, but I really do highly recommend this film. I know for me, 
it was really terrifying. There were a lot of parts that actually made me jump and makes me look back at my seat. But at the same time, this was one of those smart calculating films where you have to stay on your toes and, and think. And you're with these characters trying to find a bit of a solution to how to stop Diana. So I like that. I like a horror film that actually makes sure you use your brain as opposed to horror films where you just turn your brain off and it's just nothing but nonstop blood and guts. I like how they actually let the characters get developed and how they are thoroughly used. I also like, again, the, the, the noises. A lot of horror films fall into that trope where they just throw out lots of blaring noises and it gets aggravating after a while because, again, if we wanted loud noises, we would just go to a rock concert. So I like that. I was one of those quiet, slow burn films. And again, it's just one of those horror films that I am so pleased with. I'm so glad that we have been getting nothing lately but great horror films. I mean, we had The Witch come out earlier this year. Um, and then you also had uh, James Wan, The Conjuring 2, and then now we have another James Wan produced film, Lights Out, coming out. So I say David uh, Sandberg, he is on a fast track, and he has already been pinned to direct the Annabelle 2 film. Hopefully he can take that franchise and make it something great, because no offense to the first director, Annabelle, just, oh gosh, I just... I don't even want to get into that. I did a video with Dez HD that should be coming out sometime today, if not later on this weekend. And I go into thoughts about that. But yeah, I give this film a four and a half out of five. What did you guys think of this film? Have you seen it? Do you plan to go see it? Did it creep you out? Did it freak you out? Are you sleeping with the lights on or off tonight? I personally recommend sleeping with the lights on for a couple of days. Uh, and maybe put a few flashlights here and there just in case the power fails. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this review. Again, if you guys want me to do a spoilers review, I will. Just let me know down in the comment section below. And I'll make sure I get that out to you guys as soon as possible. Thank you again for tuning into this video. I'm Mikey Savage 21 saying peace out.